Okay, so today we're going to take a look at how to modify the Grove Beginner Kit for Arduino. We're going to cut a trace between the USB converter, it's here in the schematic on the DTR line, and the reset pin on the Atmega 328. So we're going to cut the trace in between these two. So I looked at the schematic. Now this is the PCB board layout. I've just circled the uh, converter chip and the Atmega chip. The Converter is on the left, right there, and the Atmega is on the right, right there. And so I'm going to show how the, the two are connected using the DTR and reset pins. Okay, so I'm going to show it both on the live board, the actual board. There's the DTR trace, and there's the reset trace on the Atmega. So I'm going to show you how they connect together. So here's the PCB view. It goes into a via, that little circle right there on the DTR line. And there's the reset, which goes into a capacitor that I'm going to highlight in green right there. That's the capacitor right there. All right, so we're going to continue the connection between those two. There, there's a via on the right-hand side. Now we're going to flip the board over and look at the bottom side of it. So I flipped over the PCB view to correspond to what the actual PCB looks like, the printed circuit board looks like. There's the DTR line again. And here's the reset line in that capacitor. All right, so this is the bottom side of the view of the board. All right, so here, let's take a look at that bottom side of the board. There's that via from the capacitor on the Atmega. And there's the trace that's running along the bottom of the board towards the USB converter. So I'm going to continue that along, and it's going to hit the via for the DTR line, right there. All right, so this is the wire, the trace that we want to be cutting, but we're going to cut it on the top side of the board. We just want to make sure that's the right trace, but it's there that we're going to cut it. If you could desolder, if you had a soldering on, you could remove the capacitor right there, but we're not going to do that. All right, so now I'm going to do a connectivity test with the multimeter that you had in your kit from the first year of the program to make sure that everything is connected. So I'm testing between the right side of the capacitor and the DTR line pin 23 on the USB converter. So I'm making sure that that is valid. I'm just double checking that this is the line that I want to cut. And it is because the uh, connectivity is there. It is the one that we want to get rid of. So I'm verifying that's the case before I go and cut. Remember the expression is measure twice, cut once. Well, here I'm measuring. Okay. Now, to find yourself, you want to look for the 102 and R5 parts, and you want to identify pin 23 on that board, which is right there. And you can see the trace that runs between the two. And we're going to cut along that purple line, that trace. Okay. We don't want to cut the other light blue lines that you see around it. Just that one that I show in the image. Just cut right there. You don't have to press very hard with your X-Acto knife. Be very careful that you're not um, going to cut your finger. Okay, you want to keep your other fingers clear. And you don't want to press too hard or go too quick. Nice and careful. You can wear gloves if you wish. Think of it as a, like a tough steak that you're having to cut through. Okay. Just very delicately. So you just want to get through that little thin piece of copper that's under the light blue paint. Okay, that's all you want to do is get through it gently. And then we're going to test the connectivity. Now, I've cut all the way through. Uh, I've, I've done this a few times, so I I'm generally know what I'm doing here. Um, but you may have to do this a couple of times where you cut then use the multimeter connectivity test to verify that it's cut. If it continues to beep when you do this, then you need to cut a little bit more. Okay, so when I test between pin 23, right there, and the capacitor, if it beeps when I do that, then I know I have to cut some more. Now I'm just verifying that the multimeter is working when I do that, when I tap the tips together. But really, it, it what I'm seeing here is that the cut was successful. I can proceed. Now I'm just going to test the inside of the cut to verify that it's still there. Yep, 
it's still there. But uh, but I have had a successful cut. So now I'm going to connect up the wires from the board on the ICSP um, header, the six pin ICSP header to the snap board. I'm using this, this color scheme right here. You may wish to do a different color scheme based on your own wire uh, ribbon wires, okay? But as long as you're consistent, it's okay. If you're not sure what you're doing, use the same colors that I'm using right here. Okay, so there's the eight pin connector. On the snap, I'm not connecting pins one and eight, only pins through uh, two through seven. Okay, on the snap, and I'm connecting them up to the six pin header in yellow called JP3 over here. All right. So I'm gonna be bringing those wires over now. I'm starting with that gray one. I've connected it to the RST pin on JP3. Now I'm gonna, I think it's the ground that I'm doing next. It's gonna be my black wire. There's my black wire, I'm just gonna connect it in. There we go. Next up, I'm gonna bring in another wire. See, that'll be the purple wire right there. I'm gonna connect it up right there. You see how I've done that. Next up, we're gonna take that, I think it's the white wire. Yep, the white wire I've connected up. There, you can see that. We've got two more wires to go. A little brownish wire and the red wire. So now I've got six wires connected on the Grove board to the six wires on the Snap Programmer. Like that. Okay, so they're seated properly on both sides. Basically mounted up flush against either the, the board or the Snap Programmer. Like that. Okay, feel free to pause the video now if you want to uh, to verify your connections. But basically you have to match up the, the wires on both sides the way that I just did. Okay? And that way you'll be able to program your board. But before we do that, we're going to have to reset the firmware on your Snap Programmer. You do this once uh, when you get it from the factory. Oh, and one more thing. It's really important to label your board as a modded board. Okay? Because... Um, if you have multiple boards like this, some you're going to treat as an Arduino board, others you're going to treat as a board that we do regular C or C++ kind of programming. Um, label it. Trust me. <laughs> do this so you don't get yourself all confused. So I'm saying that I've cut the reset line or reset trace on this board. Okay, for your own sanity, do this. You can also put your name on the board at this stage if you haven't already. Okay, just a little piece of tape, like that, masking tape or electrical tape, does the trick. Okay, so you've done this, you've modified it, now we've got to reflash the firmware on the Snap Programmer. We have to update the firmware so that it's uh, uh, at the right uh, settings so it can program the Atmega boards. If you don't do this, it won't be able to program the Atmega. Okay, other thing is that you're going to need two USB cables, one for powering the board, Okay, and one for programming with the Snap Programmer. Okay, so two micro USB cables. All right, I'm just putting them in. I haven't actually plugged them into the computer yet. Now, for reprogramming the Snap firmware, you're going to have to bridge the holes or the vias right here on J3. And you can use the lead on your multimeter to do that. Okay, as long as the, the multimeter allows you to, if you hit, sort of touch it flat, you'll connect the two, those two holes together uh, on J3. Okay, and this is what we're going to do right now. We go into MPLAB X, we go into Hardware Tool Emergency Boot Firmware Recovery. Okay, we read the instructions. It's important to read the instructions here. We go and select Snap right here, then Next. And what we need to do is bridge J3 for one second Okay, um, I've got it powered right now. Okay, so I'm going to bridge it for one second. You can see it's powered because of the active light. So I've connected it up to the USB. I bridge with the lead on the multimeter 
for one second or two. It's not super critical how long. Okay, and then you wait 10 seconds. And then you unplug. This allows the firmware, uh, the monitoring program on the board to say, you know what? We need to go in a, into a special programming mode. So here we go. I'm going to bridge it right now. So I lay the tip of the of the multimeter probe flat against the two so that those two are bridged together. They're connected together. That's all I had to do right there. Nothing complicated. Now I wait 10 seconds because internally the chip is saying, oh, there's something else important that's coming up. Okay, I'm following the instructions here. And then it says, after about 10 seconds, disconnect the USB. So unpower it. So I just did that. And the light, the active light turns off. Okay. I hit next. And it says unplug all the debuggers. Yep. Programmers unplugged. Verifying it's all unplugged. Yes. All right. Now it's downloading the firmware from the, the website or it's getting it ready internally on your computer. All right. Now plug the unresponsive hardware tool. So I'm going to plug in my snap again. Okay. So I've plugged in the USB between my computer and the snap. And, and I said next, and now it's reprogramming. You just wait. And it's found it. Okay. So now it's going to reprogram. Just wait. So we hold on. Writing, writing, done. Okay. We finished. We've reflashed the snap programmer. And now we're ready to actually program the boards. We're going to connect, we're going to power up the other board now, and we're going to create a standalone program where we've selected the Atmega 328P for the project. We're going to name the project in MPLAB X. We're going to have a new C main file right there. We use the default name for it. And now I'm going to write a simple little program. I'm going to add some breakpoints, and you'll see the first time I do this, it doesn't work. Um, I made a little mistake. Okay, on line eight, a little syntax error. All right, so there's different ways you can write this program. I'm writing a simple little program where I iterate once the uh, the variable I hit. Uh, I'm going to hit the compile button. It failed because I had a syntax error on line eight. Now I go to hit debug after compiling a second time. I've put some breakpoints in, and unfortunately I put the wrong breakpoint in, so it runs the program but doesn't halt it. Okay, so then I have to add start over again, the debug session. So it's loading. So I know it's connecting, but I'm not actually able to pause on the breakpoint. Okay, you'll see that it, it connects. Is it racing? Oh, right, there's this here. Okay, say yes to uh, to switching between ISP and debug wire. i got to unplug the target device. So unplug your Grove board. And, uh, and re-plug in your Grove board and hit the debug again. This little quirk of the system. It'll often happen to you. Okay, now it's running, but the breakpoints are broken because I didn't hit the right breakpoint. So I've put in another breakpoint right here. I've called my variable volatile right there. So that's a little modification. I hit debug one more time and it should halt on line 13 now. Okay, so it's running and it's halted on line 13. We have a proper connection to the board. We can single step through. We're good to go. We have a proper running board. All right. There you go. Well done on the mod. Good luck, everyone.